Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. Today we're going to work with inequalities and number lines. First, I want to be able to understand the basics of taking an inequality and graphing it. So let's just start with if I had x is, let's say, x is less than 2. How would I represent that graphically? Well, I would have a, I have a number line here. And let's give this values like, let's say, this is 2, 3, 4, and let values like uh, 1, 0, and so on, negative. Now, thinking about this in terms of uh, what this means, it means that I'm looking at all values that are less than 2. So here's 2. I'm not going to be including 2 because it's less than. So I'm going to do less than and then all values that come under this. So any value on this, my number line, maybe I'll pick another color so it'll be easier to see. Any values on this number line here that are less than or equal to 2 could be contenders. Now if it was equal, if I just did a line like that, that would read x could be less than or equal to 2. In that case right there, this dot becomes fully circled in because it means it includes the 2. When I look at this problem here, I have some value, and this 2 is really throwing me off. But, but let's overlook the 2 for this uh, value for a moment, this 2x for a moment. I think it's important to, just looking at this very quickly, realize that this value, this 2x value, is going to be greater than equal to something and less than something else. So if I were to be thinking about it in term, graphically, I would know that the first this value here would be a closed circle, and this value here would be an open circle, and that my value, whatever the 2x is, would be falling somewhere in between. That's pretty helpful, team. If you can, if you can eliminate this down to just this statement here, that it's gonna, x is going to be some unknown value is going to be less than or e greater than or equal to something, but less than something else. You could compare the structure of of, of all these graphs, and you could uh, you could eliminate two. What do I mean? Well, I'm saying that if you know that it's going to be the fill the filled in square like this one right here means that it's greater than or equal to, and the open circle means less than, then we'd be looking for the pro the problems that are struct structured so that we have a term and our unknown is greater than or equal to some value and less than another, which means we could eliminate A and D just because they have a different st uh, structure with the inequalities. All right, we're jumping the gun just slightly. If I want to deal with this inequality, the best way, the best way to do it to clarify everything is to get rid of the two. So I have X all by itself because that's throwing me off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by 2 each term so I keep everything balanced. Well, it's going to become negative 3 divided by 2 is actually a negative 1.5. Still greater than or equal to x, but less than 0 0.5. Everything gets divided by 2. The inequalities don't flip. You would only flip the inequalities if you were dividing by a, a negative 2. If you were dividing by a negative 2, what that would do is that would flip these values and then it would become um, x is less than or equal to negative 1.5 and you know less than 0 0.5. So that you only you only flip when it's a negative. Alright, so what I have here is a new statement. x is greater than or equal to negative 1.5 but less than 0.5. What would that look like? Well, I'm going to graph it now. Practice graphing it. Let's see here. And my key points are uh, negative 1.5 and one, positive 1 half. Oops, positive 1 half. And what, what do I know about those points? Well, I know that x here is going to be greater than or equal to 1.5. So what does that mean? Open or closed? 
greater than or equal to means that it's closed. And it's going to be values that are greater than that. Well, then it says x is less than 0 0.5. Now, it's less than, which means it's open, and then all values that are less than. So basically, my x is going to fall in between these two points. Now, because we've already analyzed the inequalities right here, and this is closed and this is open, we've been able to eliminate, you know, pretty quickly, answer choices like A and D. I'm looking for a starting point of negative 1.5, which I think lends itself to this point here. That's somewhere, negative 1.5 is somewhere between 0 and negative 2. And a end point at less than 1 half, which lends itself to this. All right, team, thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Hi team, I wanted to uh, encourage everyone if you have time to check out one of the MTEL math workshops. This is a great time to make new connections in the math. It's two days, one or two day workshop. Uh, you can go to GoMath and find out more information. Take care. Bye bye.